Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here for our first example video on area between polar curves. We're going to find the area inside r equals 4 cosine 2 theta in this video and outside of r equals 2. Our r equals 2 is the circle you can see here and then our r equals 4 cosine 2 theta is our flower shaped graph that extends out beyond the circle. So we want to be inside of our uh, petals here but we want to be outside of the circle. What I will do in this video is actually find the area outside of a piece of one of these petals and then we'll multiply using the symmetry. So if you think about using maybe these points here as my alpha and my beta, then I'm going to need to find basically the area of one half petal from here to here. But now that's going to give me some area inside of here that I don't want. So I'm going to need to subtract out that amount that I don't actually want to calculate. Once I have this area here, then I can go ahead and take this and multiply by 8 and get all of the area outside of the circle that's inside of these petals here. Okay, let's go ahead and set this up. So my area is going to be 8 times my formula 1 half integral from alpha to beta, and I'll figure those out in a second. So this is my alpha here, this is my beta over here. Now, what I'll need to do is take the outer function squared minus the inner function squared. So my outer function, don't look at these and necessarily see outside and inside and draw from that. Think about from our picture. Going out, my outer function, the function farther away from the pole, is my graph with the petals, my flower-shaped thing, which is 4 cosine 2 theta. So we'll want 4 cosine 2 theta squared, that's my outer function, minus my inner function, which is the circle, and that's r equals 2, so that would be 2 squared. So that is outer function squared minus inner function squared. We'll need to integrate that d theta, and now we'll need to find bounds. So to find my alpha, you can think about this is straight to the right, so it's very likely that this is 0. But I think we want to check and make sure that this is an angle of 0. The radius here is 4, right? I am 4 units away from the pole. If I plug in 4 for r on my rose petal graph here, do I get theta equals 0? That would be 4 equals 4 cosine 2 theta. And let's just make sure if I plug in 0, I would get cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, and 4 times 1 is 4. So it looks like this is indeed an angle of 0. So we're integrating from 0 to beta. Now beta, you'll notice, is an intersection point. Just based on the intersection, they should be equal to each other. So if we go ahead and solve that, 4 cosine of 2 theta is equal to the other one, 2, for the intersection point. Then dividing both sides by 4 will give us cosine of 2 theta is equal to a half. Think about where is cosine a half? Well, cosine is a half at pi over 3 on the unit circle. So whatever is inside of my cosine function, which is 2 theta, should be equal to pi over 3. And if we multiply by a half or divide by 2 on both sides, we'll get that theta is equal to pi over 6. So our beta is pi over 6 here and we will be integrating from 0 to pi over 6. Okay, let's go ahead and begin to work on this. First of all, 8 times a half, we're going to get a 4 there. Integral from 0 to pi over 6. Now, if I square 4 cosine 2 theta, I will get 16 cosine squared 2 theta. If I square 2, I just get 4 there. Integral of that d theta. Now we have a cosine square term here. Remember, we usually reduce that power using a double angle formula. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so we'll think of this as 16 times 1 plus cosine of double the angle. So double this 2 theta would be 4 theta all over 2 minus 4. All right, and I'm going to simplify this a little bit so I don't have the half. Let's at least go ahead and say from 0 to pi over 6 times 4 here. So this 16 over 2 here will be 8. So 8 times this, each term I would get an 8, and I would get an 8 cosine for theta minus 4. Okay, we can go ahead and combine like terms one more time. So we have 4 integral from 0 to pi over 6, 
we will have finally four plus eight cosine four theta. You can bump some things out. I think we've done enough simplifying with this. Let's get to the integrating, yeah? All right, so our area is going to equal four times integrating four d theta will give us four theta plus if we integrate cosine four theta that'll give us sine four theta but then the reciprocal of four will come out so one fourth comes out eight times a fourth that would give us two there and we'll have sine four theta and we will evaluate from zero to pi over six and that will give us then 4 times, plugging in pi over 6, 4 times pi over 6, that would be 4 pi over 6, also known as 2 pi over 3, plus 2 times sine of 4 pi over 6, so we'll say times sine of 2 pi over 3. That's our plugging in pi over 6, minus, then we'll get 4 times 0 would be 0, plus 2 times sine of 0. And we have a 4 in the front there. Okay, let's go ahead and say what these things are. So I think 0 and sine of 0 are both 0, so we just need to focus on this part here. So our area is going to equal 4 times 2 pi over 3 plus 2 times what is sine of 2 pi over 3? Sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And if I go ahead and do some simplifying there, I'll get 4 times 2 pi over 3 plus root 3. Now we could leave it that way. We could distribute the 4. You could say 8 pi over 3 plus 4 root 3. If you want, if you really care, I guess you could get a common denominator and write it all in one fraction. I don't think we care that much. We'll go ahead and just leave it that way. 8 pi over 3 plus 4 root 3 square units of area inside of our rose shaped graph but outside of the circle here. Okay everyone, thanks for watching. Check out our example 2 video. We'll see you then.